Hey guys and welcome today to my Gucci Marmont flap review. So I've had this bag for nearly a year. I didn't initially use it very much which is why I didn't do a very quick review. I've seen so many reviews by other YouTubers that I think are really quite good but today I want to just throw my 10 cents in and a couple of you guys have been asking for my opinion on this bag so I thought I would do a quick video. So as usual for me we'll start off with the facts of the bag. I'll do it quick don't worry and then we will get into the chat about how I feel about it particularly with the price rises um, and things like that. So yeah Let's get straight into it. So just actually looking at the bag first of all, so this is the size small and the colour you can see is the porcelain rose which I fell in love with. It's also known as antique rose, it's also known as nude, they're all the same colour and I think this season's dusty pink is also the same colour but I haven't seen it in store yet so I can't be 100% sure. But yes, so mine is porcelain rose, I think it's gorgeous, it's got this beautiful antique gold hardware. So as you can see on the bag, it's not quilted but it's stitched as though it's padded. This stitching creates this kind of padded effect and this is called metal assay. So that's why the bag is called the Marmont metal assay bag because it's stitched to look as though it's padded. It's absolutely gorgeous. I do think the stitching affords the bag a little bit more structure than it already has because it's not the most structured bag but again we'll come to that in a moment. On the back we have the heart. I don't personally really like the heart but I don't always hate it. <laughs> it's as good as it gets. So this is next to my body. I don't care. Uh, some people really can't stand it to the point where they don't buy the bag. I get that. Some people really love it but I also can see that as well. So I don't really mind this so much. I do think they should have missed it off if I were designing the bag. I'd have put the Chanel style pocket on here. It's already so similar to a Chanel. Why don't you just put the pocket on the back? That's the bit I really like. So it's a shame that's on there but I I'm not massively worried by it and some people do like it. It's smooth underneath, as you can see, you've just got a nice smooth base and then the sides are smooth as well. Now this is a year old bag and there's no marking on it whatsoever. If you look at the sides of the bag up here, it is kind of gappy at the top and that's the same on both sides. And obviously depending on how you stuff the bag and fill it, you can make that a slightly different shape. So just coming on to the way the bag locks, on the front you have this GG which is completely separate to the lock underneath. I've not had any chipping, any wear or tear or any problems with my GG in a year, which I think is good. And as you know, I'm not delicate with my bags. It is really nice, I do like it at first, wasn't sure, but yeah, we'll come to my opinions in a bit. So if I just turn the bag on its side here, you can see the lock itself. You just press this button in and the front releases, and that is basically the lock. Inside the flap, you can just see you have your stud for your lock, and then you have these two studs which just attach your emblem to the front. And then inside, mine is currently full because I was using it yesterday. I will just empty it out now to quickly show you what fits inside, but I have been using some of my new items too, which is quite exciting. So if I just show you inside the bag there, you can see I have a couple of little bits. I have my six ring key holder and in there I've got my car key. I've also got a tracker. Uh, so yeah, six ring key holder from Louis Vuitton. Next up I have my phone. So I had to get a new phone recently. I hate buying a new phone. I literally don't replace it until I've destroyed my old one. So I've just gone and got, oh, notifications. Um, I've just gone and got an iPhone 6, no. I'm so used to saying that now. I was an iPhone 10 and it's really nice. I really like it. And on the back here, I've just got a Tech 21 case, which is really pink and really quite girly. But I like the Tech 21 cases because they do actually really protect your phone. I really wanted to get the eye trunk and then I put it on my Instagram stories and you guys said no. Quite a few of you had bad stories about how it wasn't really great quality. So I listened to that and I've gone up for the Tech 21 case for now. I'm considering a Louis Vuitton folio. Anybody got any opinions on that? I've heard some good things, so let me know. But I need to be able to drop it a lot. If you can't drop it in the folio, it's no good for me. So yes, Tech 21 case. Next up in here, we have my new purchase, which I'm really enjoying using, which is my lovely O case from Chanel. And mine is in the lovely soft lambskin in a really cute pink color. I hope this isn't overexposed again and you can see it properly. It's got the lovely little silver hardware. And in here, I'm keeping all my iPhone accessories. So I have my wireless headphones, if I can open them, I'm not really tech savvy, uh, just my headphones in there. I've got a charging cable and I have my wired headphones for if I prefer to wear those. So they all fit in here really neatly, they don't stretch the case out, I'm really enjoying using it. I really love this piece, I've not had it obviously for very long, it's just been a couple of days, but they all fit in there really neatly so definitely consider an okay case for your little bits and bobs. And finally at the moment, I'm not actually using a wallet. I've been using this. So this was my card holder that I got with my Xi'an wallet from Louis Vuitton. Uh, I'll just show you that briefly. The Xi'an wallet looks like this and it comes with a central slot at the front where you put your card holder in. 
and in the back you have your little coin purse and a few more card holders in there so it's out of that but I really just like using the little monogrammed card holder I'm going to replace it with my Chanel but my Chanel has been put back in its box for now so I will be getting that out soon but I do really just enjoy using that I think it's really cute and it's really nice for my smaller bags I could actually fit one of my smaller wallets in here I regularly use my zippy coin purse from Louis Vuitton in this bag and I also have been using my clay pochette with this bag the other purse that fits in here beautifully is a Victorine, so any of the above. Again, I've got the Rose Ballerine lined one. So they all fit really neatly in this bag. You can get quite a lot in there. For example, I just feel I should show you with a wallet in as well though, just so you know. That's with my Victorine here at the side. I've got my O case with all my accessories inside of it. I've got my iPhone 10 and I've got my little key holder under there. They all fit in here really neatly. So it is a really good bag because it's not very structured, it's very flexible. And so you can stuff it as much as you like. But let me just open that back up and take these out so I can show you the inside. So just showing you the inside of the bag. Mine is lovely and clean inside. I've had it for a year and there's absolutely no marks on it whatsoever. It is a kind of, it feels suede but it's microfiber lining. And then you have this zip compartment in the back of the bag, which I've got to be honest, hardly ever use unless I had like a free credit card or debit card which I might pop in there. We have this little tab that says Gucci made in Italy. On the underside it looks like that you've just got this code. I don't know much about the Gucci code system so I'm not going to try and go through that for you but yeah that is the inside. Because of the structure of the bag it does mould around your items so you can fit as much or as little in here as you like. It's actually a lot easier to open and close I feel when it's fuller um, so I don't mind feeling that it is quite full up inside. I do worry that it will warp over time but it's not really the items inside that I think are going to warp this bag. I will show you what will warp it just now. So when it comes to warping this bag as I said I don't think it's the items inside that are going to cause the main problem. I think it's actually the fastener on the bag. So if I tilt it up and up to one side for you as you can see, when I put my finger underneath the press, I was initially concerned that this front bit would end up curling out from me lifting it constantly, but it's nice and stiff, I don't think it will do that. What actually happens is you end up pressing in on the bag, so this bit of the bag actually goes down because it is quite stiff to actually undo, and particularly when the bag's open, you can see when I close it, there's also a problem, but particularly when the bag's open, you do end up pressing it quite a way in. So it's here that I'm worried about misshaping. And as you just saw, when I close the bag, you have to press quite a long way in, particularly when it's empty. I don't know why I'm keeping doing it. See, it squeezes the bag in. So when it's actually full, your items are more likely to protect this bag. You could potentially stuff it to uh, store it, but I'm, I'm not that good with the bag. Um, so I personally don't. And I think it's holding up okay from my storage. I just literally have it stood up like this with the chain inside, that's how I store the bag, so yeah. Coming onto the chain, you have very much the same setup as you have on the Chanel bags. So you have these four holes in the top of the bag, which allow you to adjust the strap to your heart's content. So I tend to wear it as a crossbody, or you can double the strap over and have it as a short shoulder, or you can wear it long as a long shoulder bag. For me, this strap actually works in all three different ways. It tends to be a little bit long as a long shoulder, but it's still wearable. Crossbody is pretty perfect, and short shoulder is nice, but I do tend to wear it crossbody most of the time. I'm not as keen again on these bits on the side compared to a Chanel flap. I don't like this kind of open style. It doesn't feel like I'm going to lose items out of it. It's nothing as bad as that. But again, for just neatness and smartness, I wish that was a little bit more like a Chanel. <laughs> Again, I, I don't cry myself to sleep at night over it. Oh, actually, final note on warping it. The strap of the bag is actually closer to a Chanel boy rather than a Chanel flap because you have this bit of leather at the top, which is very comfortable, very nice. It doesn't cut in at all. It's not sharp. But because you have this bit of leather, you can't extend the bag to a crossbody or long shoulder using the front unless you're happy to have that on the back. So it means that every time you crossbody, you're going to use the long strap at the back of the bag, which means that when you hold the bag upright, you're always going to be holding it from the back holes. I know a lot of people with their Chanel flap do actually alternate between the front and back holes. Uh, I personally don't, I just always use the back ones anyway, so this makes no difference to me. Um, but you could find over time that because the leather is quite soft, you end up misshaping the bag by using these. Personally, again, not really. <laughs> it's fine. So when I bought this bag, I paid £1,210. It does now sell for more than that. It's 1400 and something. I'll pop the exact price down below and I'll also pop the current dollar price. So it has gone up in price. It may go up again, we don't know, but it's worth getting your hands on sooner rather than later if you're thinking about it. It comes in the leather that you see here. Now, 
I think it's lambskin leather. I've looked online, it just refers to it as Marmont leather. And in store they told me it was a lambskin, but I haven't seen it written down anywhere, so I never quite trust. But it's lovely and soft, it's very durable. And best of all, it's really lightweight. It doesn't feel no quality lightweight, it just feels lovely and lightweight. So you can fill this bag up with whatever you want inside it. And it just, it's a really good functional bag. I do have regrets about which bag I got. I would have got a slightly different one, and I'll tell you more about that in a moment. So that is the bag itself. It's a really beautiful piece. How I came to own it was literally a year ago, I was walking past Gucci because in Manchester, all the handbag places that you can shop at are on the ground floor of Selfridges. So I walked past Gucci. That's all the interaction I've ever had with Gucci. I was walking past it, saw this in the window and thought, wow, I absolutely love that color. Went in, tried this on in the medium, thought it was stunning, but wasn't really in the market for a bag at the time. Little did I know what would come later last year. So I thought, I'll think about it, but then I couldn't stop thinking about it. I really love the colour, I really love the hardware, and so I decided to go back. And when I went back, they'd sold the small and they'd sold the medium, and I just thought, oh, I needed that bag. So I remember saying to them, are you getting more in stock? What's the plan with it? And they said they didn't know it was a fairly new line. It had just been very popular. So I waited a couple of weeks, kept walking past, saw the small in the window one day, went in and got it, and was so, so happy that I did. However, I didn't immediately gravitate to this bag compared to some of my others. And the reason for that is that it's quite funky or trendy and I'm very much a classic bag kind of person. And I think sometimes given half a shot, I will gravitate towards the smarter, more formal looking bag rather than the casual one. A lot of you guys have asked me about my dress sense, particularly after my last Chanel video. Generally, I prefer formal, smart, tailored clothes. That's what I like. That's not what I always wear. <laughs> not by any stretch of the imagination. Comfort tends to be the most important thing most of the time with me and then I just have a glamorous bag with it but I but I do prefer smart clothes and I definitely prefer a kind of smarter sharper bag so this as cute as it was as much as the colour spoke to me I didn't go and pick it up when I had my other bags at home to, to choose from so the first time that I actually picked this up I do remember it because it was like an epiphany with the bag. We were going to get cat litter <laughs> from Pets at Home and I felt really unwell and I had a big snuggly cardigan on, a pair of jeans, comfy shoes, my hair, messy bun style, which I don't pull off very well. And I put the bag on and it was just so light and comfortable and felt so nice and I just kept stroking it. And so we went and we got the cat litter and everything and then came back and I remember thinking, why haven't I picked this bag up more? It's such a joy to use. So it's actually the functionality of this bag that I really like. The crossbody strap is perfect on me. I can wear chunky things underneath and it's still not too short. It just feels so nice to use. When you're feeling a little bit tired and you want to wear clothes that feel comfortable, that you can be relaxed with, that you don't have to worry about scratching, that's when I go for this bag. Because in the past, I probably would have tended to go for my Speedy, but whenever I'm out, as much as I like my Speedies, I think they're beautiful bags, I do find them a little bit, again, too casual for me and I feel this is a little bit more formal than those, if that makes sense. On the formality ladder, this looks a little bit more structured and a bit more formal. So I tend to pick this up now a lot of the time when I would have gone for one of my speedies. Yes, it doesn't fit anywhere near as much inside of it as a speedy. I do love the GG. I actually went back and got the matching belt to this because I think that's really cute as well. I don't wear them together because I think that looks weird. <laughs> I like things to match, but not when they're quite bright if that makes sense, or not too many GGs. I just think you can overdo the GG. So yeah, I do really like the bag a lot. However, all that being said, should have got the medium, totally should have got the medium. So the logic that I had at the time and the reason that I went for the small rather than the medium was that I thought the size looked better on my frame and also if you look at the bag, it's not very structured. If you squeeze it, you do get this base sagging down and the sides popping out. It's not structured and firm like a Chanel flat bag and so I prefer more structured bags. When you get the medium, that base sag is much more prominent and so is the sag at the sides, which I thought, no, I like the more structured look. It looks a lot neater in the small and that's the big reason that I went for the small. That being said, I think if I'd got the medium, I would have used it way more because there's some days when I want to be comfy casual that I still want to take my A5 diary out, story of my life, and it doesn't fit in here, which is why I don't reach for this bag as much as I should do, and that's when I'll go for my speedy because this is just a little bit too small for me. And the really annoying thing about it is that because it is such a lightweight, great bag, it's the perfect bag to get in a bigger size to put more stuff in because it's still light. So yeah, I, I wish I'd gone for the medium. I do consider selling this and going for the medium and just putting up with a little bit of the sag on the base because now I know that this is mainly a casual day bag for me. 
I think I'm more happy to accept the sag and the different shape. And I've seen so many YouTubers with the medium and gone, grr, I'm so jealous. So um, yes, I, I wish I'd gone for the medium. When I got this, I definitely thought of it as a day and evening bag. It's not really so much the bag that I grab for in the evening. I would now tend to go for my Chanel, which is a similar color, or my Dior, both of which came a lot later. Um, so I would definitely be happier with a bag that has a little less structure. But I do think the small is a great, cute evening bag. The medium's still great for evening. They're luxury bags, they're beautiful but they're such well-priced luxury bags. That brings me on to why I think this bag is so popular. So I really think Gucci have done an amazing job with the Marmont range. It's beautiful, they're camera bags. I really like the camera bags. I've really had to stop myself buying a camera bag in addition to this because I feel like they'd be similar use to me and so I wouldn't use one very much so there's no point in buying two so that's what stopped me. But I really like the larger camera bag with the Gigi on the back, that would be perfect. But why I think this bag is so popular is that it reminds me of the Chanel flap. I know there's so many people who've compared them in YouTube videos. You've got the flap style and you've got the four holes on the top with the adjustable chain that make this very similar. It is also spot on, pretty much the same size as a medium large Chanel flap. And it's also quilted. Yes, it's not the same pattern, but it's a quilted leather lambskin bag. There's so many similarities between the two, but this is a third of the price of a Chanel flap or half to a third of the price, depending on where you are. Price is so, so good, and yet the quality's there. I think people are crying out at the moment for more affordable luxury bags, because I genuinely think there are more people getting into luxury bags or just wanting quality in their items. And I don't think you should have to pay what is it now for a Chanel flap? I know my jumbo, when I bought it, I think it was six or so years ago, I got my Chanel jumbo. I paid £2,975. I remember it to the dot because I could not stop thinking about it. And now my bag sells for 4500 I think that's an incredible increase in price. And I completely understand why people do not want to pay. Even if they can pay, they don't want to pay that amount for a well-made handbag. And that's where Gucci comes in perfectly. And on top of that, they offer this in so many sizes, so many colors. You've got the velvet versions as well. I think Gucci are really meeting a need in the market with this bag and I just think it's personally really nice. Italian designers prices do tend to be a little bit better as well. This is a perfect example of something beautifully made at a good luxury price. It's still not a good price <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination but it's a good luxury price. So for me this bag is actually one that feels really luxurious to use because it's so lovely and soft, the chain is so nice, the straps are great length, it feels lovely, it's nice and light and the leather feels great. I mean, it is a luxury bag. Usually when I say I enjoy carrying my bags, it's because I like looking at them, I think they're pretty, and yeah, I just like taking them out, looking at them everywhere, it's very sad. But with this, it's actually super comfy to wear. And for me, when it comes to being luxury items, uh, I've mentioned a couple of times in the past that when I lived in London, I had this crazy experience where I ended up living on Park Lane and had this kind of gossip girl <laughs> life for a very short period where I kind of experienced a different way of living that wasn't my own at all. And what I learned from being around people who are incredibly affluent is that, obviously this is sweeping generalization in the group that I happen to, to spend time with, but they pretty much all dressed for their own comfort and their own enjoyment first and weren't as bothered by what other people felt. Uh, in particular, my flatmate always used to uh, come up to me when I bought a new item of clothing and she'd touch it and feel it because to her, the most important thing was that something felt nice on your body. Yes, that it fit and looked beautiful. She was very particular about that as well, but she liked the feel of clothes and that stuck with me. So now when I buy something new, I go up and I touch it first and it, it's nice. I love feeling like I'm surrounding my body in nice things. And this, again, isn't the fanciest bag in the world, but it feels really nice to wear, it's really comfortable, it's lovely, and it's treating myself really well, and that's what I like about it. I'm also really enjoying wearing my Jimmy Choo wedges that I just got that I accidentally unboxed with the wrong bag. I thought that they would be closer to my Lady Dior. I don't know where anything is now on my shelves because I've been rearranging them. Um, yeah, I thought they'd be closer to my Pink Lady Dior, but they actually are really, really close to this. So I wish I'd unboxed them with this video, but never mind. I'll show you some pictures of me with the bag and the shoes just to show you how they match but I think they look really cute together. So I hope you've enjoyed this little extra video this week. As usual, I post every Sunday and hopefully try and get another one out during the week sometimes. So yeah, hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.